as Frank from Cap Thesis. Today, we'll be looking at two potential warning signs for the S&P 500. Take a look at the two live bullish patterns in play still, and also where the S&P 500 will need to hold if and when that material pullback does arrive. So let's start with this chart, which looks at times when we had at least three 1% moves in a row since 2021. This is important because we had exactly that for the first time last week to conclude the week on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, starting with that first 1% decline on Fed Day, and then after that, two 1% gains. And it's important because it could connote two-way volatility is coming back. And as we talk about a lot, that would mean that this pristine rally could be in jeopardy because really it's been defined by small movements, especially on the upside. Now we see back here, not surprisingly, that a lot of those occurred in 2022 during the downturn and right after. Typically see that at inflection points, either short term or longer term, where in 2021, really they just were respites along the major uptrend that we saw. So little bits of volatil volatility that didn't turn into anything more. And so if this advance still has a lot more to go, it could be one of those times once again. But considering where we've come from, possibly considering that it may be something uh, worse than that, at least for the short term. And so this is a close-up look at, again, the last time it occurred. This is a weekly chart just to eliminate some of the noise here. And so if you recall, back in early February of last year, the market had actually five straight 1% moves started with a down day three straight advances and then another down day and that marked the top now it's clearly very similar because of the calendar time and also because both of these rallies started in october and the last one lasted about 16 weeks this one now 14 weeks and counting 20 percent, 21 percent. you can see where we're going with this and as we know typically get a lot better seasonality to end the year and not as much to begin the year clearly outperformed in January this year and January of last year. So that's one thing to consider. Now, number two is this. Looking at the new 52-week highs for the S&P 500 and new 52-week lows. And as we know, we last had a new high of number of new highs back in mid-December. This was about 107, rain December 14th. And since that point, this has been diverging. We still had a good amount of new highs throughout the time frame here, right? Hit close to 90, close to 80 recently, but lower highs as the markets continued higher. So we can call this a divergence. Now, we know there's been a lot of divergences along the way and really none of them have mattered. And that's really what's created this wall of worry and the market continues to go higher, but we can't ignore it. And the reason is this. If you look back again over the last year of action here, we saw the number of new highs peak right as July began last year, and then clearly the market continued higher from that point, topping out on July 27th during that reversal. Back in February of last year, this number never got too big, only because we're still coming back from the big decline from 2022. And so not many stocks really hit new highs, but at the same time, when this number did spike from a previous spot, it did mark the top. And the market then rolled over both times. And as it did that, course, new lows started to get higher. So that's important because it's very minimal here, but for the first time since the October lows, we had double digits in new lows yesterday. And could this just be a blip on the radar screen or right back down? Yes, of course. We know that the areas that have been underperforming stay near their lows. They can eventually rally, but the ones that have been so much, you know, have advanced so much further, that's going to take a while for them to, for them to make new lows, but that's the case. Because each one of these times, these new lows spiked after some of the damage was in place. So typically see new highs top first, the market itself top, and then you see new lows coming. So again, just looking for potential changes of character here, and that would be one of them. And so looking at the patterns, still nothing to be concerned about from the big pattern perspective. This breakout from December 1st continues to be in play. 5,030 got closer and closer to it. You still have a lot of wiggle room now to pull back. And so that's good, but it just makes the potential pullback to get here bigger if and when that happens. And so as the market broke through 4,800 as well, it created an even bigger 
pattern breakout, which counts all the way up to near 6,100. So this is a weekly chart. So you still have some leeway here, but not a lot, right? We've had just a few, a handful of retracements, not even 2%. And so a 2% decline from any point right around here would potentially negate this. But we have to respect all these breakouts for long as they continue to happen because ignoring them along the last three months would have caused us to miss a good amount of this upside. At the same time, if breakouts start to fail, and that means bearish patterns may begin to work again. And that really has been missing. As we talk about it a lot, if you're in an uptrend, bullish patterns work the majority of the time, bearish patterns do not. This is exactly what's been happening recently. And we talked about this potential after that bad reaction to the Fed last week, where we had profile potentially two outcomes that were bearish on a very short term basis, two hour chart, and on the daily. No downside follow through, of course. So both of these were negated even before saying to break. So are we going to ignore all the other potential ones that come up? Of course not. At any point, one of these could be a major top where the next rally could be a lower high. But until that happens, again, respect what's in front of us, pay attention to the warning signs we just talked about, and also pay attention to what the trend is doing so far up, so far bullish patterns continue to work. Now, if one of these starts starts to actually play out on the bearish side and bullish patterns fail and new highs continue to get lower and we get more more new lows, then we could have the, you know, the table could be set for a bigger drawdown. And if that occurs, we're going to be watching this. We talked about this chart before, the weekly Bollinger Bands, how in the best markets, of course, we have the S&P hugging the top of the bands and pulling back near uh, the middle of this, which is the 20-week moving average, just basically the, the 100 day. In 2017, clear example of the most non-volatile, consistent uptrend there is. And so there's no reason to think that this was ever going to, you know, fall from this perspective because it didn't even get down to that 20-week moving average until the vol this implosion of early 2018. But even along the way, 2021 very similar, and 2023 was behave the same way. However, we did have a few times when it came down and touched the lower line. More importantly, though, routinely came back and hit the upper band here. And that's what we're doing dealing with now. So as long as that continues to be the case, of course, we can we can trust this market. What of course you don't want to see is coming off the high, getting back down to the lower band and not being able to rally from it. And that was the epitome of what was going on in 2022. That's it we have for today. Check out these videos and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.